All right, okay, so here I am. This is Tai Chi Salon with LG, and I'm here. Wait, is it recording? I don't think it's recording. I'm here on location. <laughs> That's recording. Yeah. I'm here on location at Tai Chi Mecca, William C. C. Chen Tai Chi Chan, with no other than Max, Maximilian Chen himself. What's up? All right, Max. I'm going to make this short and sweet. I really appreciate you doing this. Uh, no problem. No problem. Uh, how old were you when you started training? Uh, I think I was like four when I started training, not too seriously. Just uh, started doing some praying mantis with my uncle. Around 11, I think I started doing Tai Chi with my dad a little bit too, so I was doing both for a while. And then after I hit 14, I started getting a lot more interested in fighting. Yeah. I mean, I was always interested in fighting, but I, my interest grew a lot more around 14. And I started uh, um, dabbling in boxing and kickboxing and other things like that. And then. As I got more into it, my interest grew and just kept growing, and I uh, started dabbling in even more different martial arts. Right, right. So, uh, so when when did you learn the form from from your dad? When did he teach you the form? Uh, like How like I said, you? around eleven, I started. And with My dad. When did you start doing it to the left side? Oh, to the left side. Honestly, I'm not even really sure. Uh, Is there a particular reason for that? Well, I just feel like it's it's good to balance balance you out, like learn things on the other side. And also, I, I, I believe it also helps you uh, figure out uh, things that you're doing on, wrong on the right side, or because you know you just got to pay attention to the details because you kind of know what to do, but you know you're almost relearning it a little bit in a sense. But you already kind of know it, so it's easier to pick up details that, that maybe you're not missing, that, or maybe you're missing on the other side. Interesting. Okay, so I have a question about training. So. Let's say, for example, there's training for competition, yeah. and then there's training for what you would need to do for self-defense in, in the event something happened to you on the street. Yeah. And then there's training for the things that you do as a professional, like, for example, bodyguard, bouncing yeah. stuff. Is there any difference in, in the way that you approach training for those three different aspects? Uh, really, no. No. Okay. I mean, uh, people say, oh, street fighting is a whole different thing, but it's really not that different. They're just minor adjustments that need to be made. If you say you only train for the street, and you know you don't spar because it's too deadly. What you're doing probably just doesn't work. To be perfectly honest, like you just it, it's more he said, she said, and less scientific. But you know when when it comes down to like training for actual combat, it's got to be a little bit more scientific. There's got to be some testing done, which is sparring and stuff like that, and maybe even doing some actual fights. You know, to see how you 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 handle the whole app aspect of someone actually coming at you mentally, you know what I mean? Right. Because you could be right. great, there's a lot of guys that are great in the gym and, you know, fall apart in fights. So, so I've watched you, I've watched your fights and one of the main things that impresses me is how, you st how do you stay so relaxed? Is there, is there some key to that? How do you stay so relaxed in, the, in that kind of a situation? Uh, all right, well, all right, two things. Well, number one, you got to train. When you train, you can't always be comfortable. I think it's, it's good put yourself in uncomfortable situations and go after that. If you train too comfortably, you're not going to be used to dealing with the stresses of a fight. So define comfortable. Well, you know, it's like, you know, sometimes, you know, some people want, only want to train with certain ways, only with certain people, only doing certain things, you know, and they stay within their comfort zone. It's good to stay out of your comfort zone. Like one time, at one point, you know, I was going to a bunch of different gyms. And it was, I had to choose between two gyms because, you know, just, I didn't have enough money. Even though I thought both gyms are great. Yeah. And I'm, nothing wrong with either gym. I thought both gyms are awesome. I had to choose one. So I thought about it and I said, all right, well, when I go to this gym, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> I'm like, I kind of don't want to go sometimes because I know it's going to be really tough. And I'm kind of excited to go to this other gym because I know that workout's going to be a little lighter. So I chose the one that I was more comfortable with. So you, you chose the hard path. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I understand. I that. figured that would be better for me. Okay. You know? not, not to say there's anything wrong with the other gym, but that was my logic. And uh, I think that helped, helped me in my fights. You know? So that goes back to my primary question. The reason that you, you relax is because you've been in situations before where you... I put myself in. You put yourself in, in situations. So it sounds to me also like you're talking about training for the unexpected. Yeah. Like improvisation as opposed to structure. Yeah. Yep. There's got to be some structure, but you know, you, you open yourself up to variation. At first, okay. you know, things have to be very structured. And as time goes on, as you get better, then you start dealing with variations. Like, you know, when you're doing pads, 
pretty much you, you're, you're imagining you're hitting someone that's your size. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. But uh, as time goes on, then you start trying to deal with different heights. Someone's long or someone's that's short or how to deal with it. And how to do these different situations. But first, you want to deal with someone your size. Once you can somewhat handle people your size, then you start dealing with more variations. And okay. uh, you know, big thing I always say about fighting, fighting is the art of uh, going to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Interesting, very interesting. Um, uh, so how much, so there's always, the, there's always the question about Tai Chi and fighting and the bridge between those two those two disciplines, how much of the actual form, uh, and we did a little bit of that today yeah. in, in, in my workout with you, yeah. how much of the actual form do you find that you're able to apply in, in a real fighting situation? So as far as actual moves, not a lot, just because the tag form is old, nothing wrong with that, but the thing is, it is old, hasn't really been updated as far as techniques go, so there's a lot of the straight, a lot of the straight techniques are a little ancient, so they're not applicable to today's fighting, but the martial principles are there. Mm -hmm. Like you know, like, like, like what we were doing, needle of the sea bottle. When I was, when you know, when I was throwing yeah, it, and you should have seen the way I was throwing Max over my shoulder. It's the same mechanics as a hip throw, and right. you know, uh, same thing. You know, in the form, you learn how to shift the weight, then execute the move, not execute the move as you're shifting the weight. That's a martial principle that all martial arts need. So right. th those are the main things I think you could take away from in Tai Chi. Okay. So this is like my as far main... As martial principle. Right, uh, right. Martially so though. So this will be like my, what, my main conclusion, conclusion question is, like, what do you think is the most important thing for a martial artist to, to strive for? What's the, what's the most important goal that you, to, to strive for and maintain as, uh, as, as a martial artist? I mean, it's a very uh, complicated question. Yeah, it is. Because every, everyone's after a different thing. So I, I, don't, I don't think I can accurately uh, uh, answer that, but I, I guess the, the best thing I could say is uh, whatever your goal is, get after it and uh, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Cool. You know, like, you know, don't always choose the easiest path. Challenge, continue to challenge yourself. That's, that's probably the biggest thing I'd say. Find awesome. ways to challenge yourself. That's why, you know, I learned the form and I was doing the form a whole bunch of times. And I was like, all right, this is great. I know the form now. I challenged myself. I was like, I taught myself the left side. No one, no one showed me that. I taught myself that. Yeah, you inspired yeah. me to do that too, actually. Yeah, and you know, so, you know, just find different ways to challenge yourself. And, you know, like a lot of people, you know, not a lot of people, but a few of the students got mad at me, you know, when I started teaching that they didn't like it. But my point to them was point out to me what's wrong with that. Tell me why it's bad, and we won't do it again. But if you can't tell me why it's bad, can't tell me why it's, you know, why it's harmful, there's, there's only benefits to this, you know? Like, I can tell you a hundred ways, reasons why it's great. If you can't tell me any reason why it's wrong, then we're, this is what we're gonna do, you know? Awesome. I'm gonna challenge you guys. Awesome. And you should be happy that you're getting challenged. All right, so I was going to ask you in this interview if you've ever had to use your, your, your skills as a fighter on the street, and if you want to say something, if you want to call, you know, like maybe, you yeah. know, a little incident. Well, you know, every, just, one, every once in a while things happen, like um, last Monday uh, somebody uh, decided to yell kind of aggressively at me for whatever reason, and, uh, you know, I had to go up there, and he was talking a lot of shit, and I had to put him in this place. <laughs> Awesome. To make a long story short, so yeah. you know, I mean, it happens. You know, I, I get a lot of people messing with me, but me, I'm not a very big, scary guy. So you know, people like to. At least know, not on the outside. Yeah, yeah. So a lot, a lot of people like to, uh, you know, play the tough guy with me, and uh, you know, and hopefully, by confronting them, it makes them better people. So we'll see. I'm sure. I'm sure it does. Yeah. Max, you're an animal. Thanks. I really appreciate you doing this. This is Tai Chi Salon with LG, and hey. in case anybody wonders, Matt and I, Max and I have both been vaccinated, so that's why we're sitting here with our masks off for Got a second. Got my Johnson & Johnson. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Signing off. Thank All you very right, much. See you guys.